Welcome back to Physical Chemistry on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to continue our discussion of the compression factor and work a second example problem where we're asked to calculate Z. So first of all, let's read the problem. Carbon dioxide gas, one mole, at 373 Kelvin occupies 536 milliliters. At 50.0 atmospheric pressure, this means 50 atmospheres. Calculate the compression factor Z. And from this calculation, we can determine two things. First of all, is the gas behaving ideally? And second of all, if not, do attractions or repulsions predominate in the gas? And this would be the case if this turned out to be a real gas, in other words, a gas behaving non-ideally. So we've got two things here. First of all, recall that the molar volume, or V sub m, is really just the volume given in a problem, the actual volume of the gas divided by the number of moles of gas. Okay. Also, the compression factor, Z, is the ratio, or the quotient, of the real molar volume divided by the ideal molar volume if it was calculated from the ideal gas formula. Okay? So first of all, let's figure out what the real molar volume is in this problem. So the real molar volume would be whatever the real volume of the gas is, V, divided by the number of moles of the gas. Well, those two things are given to us in the problem. We know that the, this carbon dioxide gas occupies 536 milliliters. Now, I'm going to convert the milliliters to liters. That would be dividing this number by 1,000. So that would be 0 0.536 liters. So that would be my volume, okay? Because in the numerator, I'm just going to have V divided by N. N is the number of moles of gas. This is just one mole exactly, so divided by 1.00 moles. That's my numerator. That is the expression for the molar volume that is the real molar volume of the gas. The real volume it occupies divided by the number of moles occupying it. Now in the denominator we have the ideal molar volume. This can be determined from the ideal gas formula. Right? So remember pressure is equal to nRT over V. If I divide both the numerator nRT and the volume in the denominator by N, then I get that the pressure is equal to RT over the molar volume. And I can take this molar volume and solve it for that. Okay, which would give me R times T over the pressure. Okay, if you imagine rearranging this equation to solving for molar volume, you get molar volume equals RT over P. So I'm going to essentially plug that expression in here. So the R I'm going to use in this case is 0 0.08206 liter atmospheres per mole per Kelvin. The reason I'm using this gas constant and not the usual 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin is because I don't care about energy. I don't want the joule units. I'm, I know I'm going to have to be dealing with a pressure in atmospheres, so this gas constant has units that contain atmospheres. So that's my first key. The second key is that it also has units of liters, which are going to cancel with the liters in the numerator. So this is the correct R to use, 0 0.08206 liter atmospheres per mole Kelvin times the temperature given as 373 Kelvin, and then divided by the pressure of 50.0 atmospheres, also given in this problem. Now, obviously, when I simplify the numerator, that gives me 0 0.536 liters per mole. When I multiply R times the temperature and divide by the pressure, the denominator simplifies to 0 0.612, and it's going to be in units of liters per mole because the atmospheres and the Kelvin units cancel. Okay. So when I take this quotient right here, I get that the compression factor Z is equal to 0 0.876, which tells us a couple of things. One, the gas is not ideal. If it were ideal, the Z would be equal to 1. But in this case, it's a real gas because Z is not equal to 1. So it's not ideal. And now we can answer the second question, do attractions or repulsions predominate in the gas? This is a valid question when we have a real gas. And we can answer this by looking at our compression factor and seeing that it's less than one. And when Z is less than one, that means that we have a gas in which attractions are predominating. Okay? That does not mean there's not repulsions. Again, both of these repulsions and attractions exist within the gas to some extent, but in this case, because Z is less than one, attractions dominate in this gas. Okay? If Z were greater than one, and I think we had an example of that in the previous uh, example, then repulsions would dominate. 
But in any case, hopefully this calculation of compression factor makes sense. It's a fairly simple calculation and it's very useful when you want to determine whether or not you have a real gas and whether or not repulsions or attractions dominate. Okay? So please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.